right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today, I'm delighted to be joined by AJ Silver, who is actually today in London in the UK, across the pond, as people in America like to say. How are you doing, AJ? <laughs> I am doing fantastic, John. Thanks for having me today. And I was going to say I'm a little jealous of the weather. Uh, sunny San Diego sounds beautiful. It's it's a little chilly here in London right now. So, uh, well, you know, as I said to you before coming on air, I, I grew up in uh, you know I grew up in Ireland, so I'm well used to November. November in Ireland is uh, is a pretty chilly month, too. So I can sympathize. <laughs> Um, and AJ Scott grew the Gorilla Agency into the leading SEO agency in Minneapolis and within four short years turned the venture into a multi-million dollar exit. Now you have turned your sights on applying those same innovative agency systems and processes to your latest venture, Small Business Bonfire. Pretty good for Halloween in Ireland. They do bonfires in Halloween. So there you go. <laughs> Everything ties in. <laughs> a company focused on helping entrepreneurs start and scale their businesses through free resources, actionable articles, and low cost courses. Uh, okay. And what we're going to talk today about is SEO. Uh, because I think, AJ, I think there's there's a lot of confusion around SEO because this, with regulation, with with the cost of of you know with adwords and everything like going through the roof with organic with people offering i mean everybody i get bombarded daily by people from gmail accounts telling me that they're they can put me on page one of any anything i want for any subject any keyword i'll get you on page one and i, and I kind yeah. of feel that people are a little overwhelmed so can you just get a, um give me a state of the seo industry today yeah, thank you so much uh, for bringing up that topic. I think it's a topic that I hold pretty near and dear to my heart, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I'll actually start with a little story. So um, when we were, so we kind of went through a little bit of a renaissance, if you will, at the Gorilla Agency. Uh, when I first started doing SEO, it was really, it was still heavily uh, kind of about backlinks, to be honest with you. I mean, that was a huge part yeah. of our strategy for our clients. So call it circa 2017. I mean, it was literally like write an okay piece of content, send a few links to that piece of content, right? Have a good internal uh, structure to the website, right? And some of that stuff's going to rank. Um, it's actually kind of interesting. And, and some of those tactics, I mean, link building obviously is still, um, is still a pay part yeah. of SEO. I think there's a little less emphasis on that. Um, but throughout the years, really, there's we kind of veered away from, uh, you know, link building as a strategy, uh, a because it's pretty costly. I mean, you know, if you're going to if you're going to buy links, that's one thing they're expensive. But if you're going to even, you know, put put together an outreach campaign, I mean, that can be be pretty time consuming and, and expensive as well. So I think that the really the changes kind of happened, uh, you know, over the years that like what we're kind of doing today and what really the state of SEO is now, it's it's really twofold. It's it's one, it's about building up kind of topical relevance. Um, you know, so so writing, you know, let's say you're let's say you're a roofer or you're a, an attorney mm -hmm. or you're a digital agency, right? You focus on kind of a, a, a topic and a subset of topics and you write kind of the gambit of really kind of build up your website as like the answer to a lot of your customers' questions. Um, so that's kind of A, and then really B is E E A T is uh, becoming uh, very more very much more prominent, I think, in the last couple of years. And I actually learned this one from Phil Singleton, uh, who purchased the agency, purchased the Gorilla. Um, he actually taught me a lot about E E A T and kind of the again like what we were doing at the Gorilla and what he was doing, um, you know, for his agency, and now that we actually are currently doing at the Gorilla. Um, is really more focused on, again, EEAT. So it's experience, expertise, authority, and trust. And, you know, part of that, and I could kind of rant on this all day, but I guess I'll <laughs> kind of like build that back from, you know, the, the trust yeah. piece. So like, what is trust? It's, it's really like, are you a legitimate business? You know, do you have your, you know, address, phone number on the website? Are you a person, you know, that's writing the content? Is there a face kind of behind the business? That kind of thing. Authority is, you know, that kind of link building piece. And then really like experience yeah. and expertise is, is really what we're focusing on now. And I like to use kind of a, um, it's sort of a, you know, it's really like, I guess you'd call it like an analogy or, um, you know, just generally speaking, it's like, okay, so look at like Forbes, right? I think they're going through mm -hmm. 
you know, a little bit of like turmoil, like big publications like that, because what Google's going to want to yeah. do in the future and like, just think about this logically is they're going to want to rank content based on who wrote it, not on the authority of the website, right? Like if mm-hmm. AJ Silver is writing a piece of content and I've sold a business, I've done SEO, I've done, you know, things of that nature. My piece of content should outrank an intern who wrote for Forbes. So if you just like think about it like that logically, I mean, that's where we're currently, we're at the tip of that iceberg. And I think it's just going to get, um, it's just going to get more and more apparent, like as, as we go, you know, kind of in the next two to five years is like, again, Google's going to want to rank content based on experience and expertise, as opposed to like the, just the generic authority of the website, like they have done right. for the last 10 years, if that makes sense. No, that that makes that makes perfect sense. And if you think of that, that ties in neatly to AI because obviously now that you know people are being being able to produce like voluminous content, you know, using AI again, it kind of speaks in favor of moving back towards that uh, that uh, expertise piece because like anybody can put in a few prompts, get an article, throw it out there. Um, but number one, I mean, it remains to be seen how AI generated content is really going to rank or, or be, be, um, be assessed, but it's the expertise piece. Cause like anybody can do that. Right. Yep. But you, you, but, but it's not going to, as you said, I mean, how is it, how are you going to build trust or resonate with people if it's just, if it's an anonymous or somebody they've never heard of and it's just AI generated content. For sure. And that's actually, I'm really glad that you brought that up because I've actually written, um, I think I'm on like my 10th or 15th blog post, <laughs> just generally about like AI content. I talk about AI content a lot. I think what AI content did is, is it really raised the bar, right? Cause like call it 2000, again, I'm just going to keep referencing like yep. circa 2017, you know, when I started the agency, I mean, we had like, we had, and you know, and even had when we were, um, when we sold the agency, we had like a lot of writers that were in house. Um, and so it was really expensive to produce quality content for our clients. And now what can you do? I mean, you, you exactly, like you said, you have a prompt, you click a button, you know, AI chat GPT or Jasper, you know, one of those tools really produces like a full, full piece of content for your website. Mm -hmm. And so really what I think it has done is it sort of like raised the bar, like here's now the minimum, right? And I think what Google's kind of said all along and, and, you know, what they're looking for even more now is, again, that experience expertise piece, like we talked about, you know, who's authoring the content, you know, what are they actually publishing on LinkedIn? Have they been on podcasts? I mean, part of my, you know, strategy now, like even with talking to you, you know, just in full transparency is like, I'm trying to increase my like expertise and authority to Google and like being on this podcast and dozens of other ones, right. Google crawls those and says like, okay, AJ knows this stuff. So it's Mm -hmm. like the stuff like being on podcasts, that's like huge, right. Like putting out video content is big, like raising the bar of the actual content that you're writing for your website. So like, having you know great images right videos on that piece of content like again like explainer vis- videos or like i've been experimenting with like putting little one minute reels on my content yep. um you know it's that stuff that really like is going to be a necessity i think moving forward just raising the bar on the overall content yeah and and i think the other thing too that you you just touched upon there is the fact that content is consumed now in so many different ways and people have different preferences about how they consume that content that leveraging different ways of of um of displaying your content, like you said, is, you know, maybe you need reels and shorts, maybe you need full length videos, maybe you need, you know, white interactive white papers or, but you, you need to be able to hit your audience in, in many different ways. Cause now we're just getting, we're getting overwhelmed with ways of consuming that information. For sure. And I think, you know, one of the big things that um, Google has had in their algorithm for for quite a while now is just dwell time, generally speaking. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for me, again, one of the things that I've been experimenting with, and it's, it's turned out to work, work pretty well, to be honest with you, is like, if I'm going to have like a step by step guide, right? So like, yeah. step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, do this, what I'll do is I'll actually have like a mini, like a little reel, like a one minute reel, that I'll yeah. also publish you know, that'll be like hosted through YouTube. So I've got a piece of content now on YouTube. I'll share that 
you know, my other, you know, my other social channels. And then that will actually like live, that piece of content will live in, in that article. And what's cool is that, you know, if somebody's like, okay, step one, I know that I don't really need to watch the video. Okay. Step two. Now I watch this one minute video. I'm on the page longer. I'm consuming the content. You know, I think that um, those short videos are going to be a game changer here, even moving forward, wrapping back around to your original question. But just again, like elevating the content is going to be a necessity, like moving forward, um, just generally speaking. Yeah, and and like you said, because I mean, back when first of all, when you know the the, the whole move to content, uh, you know, came and you know inbound and putting out as much content and content and content, you know, I did wonder at the time is like if everybody's producing content, like who's actually reading it. And I yep. think now, and I think now we're kind of probably faced into the same thing to some degree is like suddenly everybody's going to be producing video content of all different because now there's tools you can do it. So again, I think like you said, I think it's, it's going to, again, be quality and what you, you call here, you know, experience and expertise. I, I think quality and I think, unfortunately, is people get very carried away with volume over quality. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I feel like a lot of, it's kind of interesting, like a lot of, uh, you know, in, so, you know, switching gears a little bit, you know, yeah. with, working with like small businesses, awesome. You know, a lot of that, a lot of their, you know, content, you know, especially if we're talking about like a roofer, right. Or yeah. a personal injury attorney or, you know, things of that nature. I mean, there's still like, there's a lot of content that you can write, but just having like one, you know, one really high quality article can drive a lot of traffic to a website. So, you know, again, shifting gears over to like what I'm doing now with small business yeah. on fire and kind of our differentiator, if you will, is that, um, you know, like, again, if you look at Forbes, Forbes is, it's a content mill. It's a huge publication. I mean, again, they're, they're ranking for a ton of stuff based on the authority and the merit of their website over the last 10 years. Like what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, well, how can I carve out, a, carve out, you know, my space in that area? And I think the big thing is like quality content written from an expert as opposed to an intern, right? Like that's the differentiator of small business bonfire, at least for me. So I would like apply that to all businesses and say like, okay, you're the expert, right? Like, again, this is a thing that <laughs> Phil kind of taught me is like, get on video, right? Talk about, you know, whatever you're going to write about your blog post, transcribe it into a blog post, add your own content expert, you know, that expertise piece is like when I did X, Y, and Z, when I sold a company, like Google's crawling that and reading it. And when you're, you know, putting your own perspective into the mix of the content, like that improves the quality and the images. Again, what you said hits the nail on the head, like quality is going to be more important now and, and in the future than ever. Yeah. And, and like you said, is I, I think that's it for, for small businesses. It's that expertise piece, because as you know, you mentioned roofers or whatever, but like, I mean, half the time when I look at things, I look something around the house that needs doing i look for a video from an expert who does this kind of thing then often they're you know they could be local small businesses that prompt you then to think okay maybe i should reach out to them because i have a bigger job because they they actually they know what they're talking about and they actually helped me already and they don't even know it yeah yeah, it's kind of okay. It's kind of funny that you bring that up because I feel like in wrapping back around to like this, this like quality of content piece yeah. is like it will, I mean, that that is going to be the differentiator. If it's easy to do, if you can click a button and produce an article with ChatGPT, then everyone's going to be doing it. It's sort of like call it call back to like circa 2017, 16. Like the crappiest links are usually the easiest ones to acquire that don't really move the needle. Now, mm -hmm. I would I would, you know, I would say for everyone listening to this podcast, look at your competitors, right? If if you go out to your competitors and let's say you are a roofer, right? You do siding, you do landscaping, right? You're an attorney, whatever the case is, your local service-based businesses. How many of your competitors are putting out, you know, beautiful videos, right? With good production quality, mini reels inside of articles, right? That explain like how and why you do things, mm -hmm. right? Having a really nice written piece of content that they're authoring as the business owner, not just a nameless or, or a faceless organization. And I, I would almost guarantee like not a lot of them are even doing that now. So if you can mm -hmm. start doing that stuff, that's going to get you a huge leg up on the competition. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, absolutely uh, agree. And 
And like you said, I mean, as long as you keep it very, very practical, so you show your expertise, because that's another thing I think trap people fall into sometimes as they start to think, okay, if I'm going to put out something, then I have to write it in a more, you know, in a more flowery way. I need to be, and and really at the end of the day, I think the authenticity, you lose the authenticity at that point and you're kind of losing the, the, the connection that you're trying to create unless you keep it kind of very real. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I think what's, uh, when you bring up like the flowery way, it's kind of interesting. Like I have worked with, you know, at this point I've worked with probably, you know, well over a hundred businesses, you know, in a, in a given time period. And almost, I would say almost all of them want to sound like extremely professional. You know what I mean? Like they want this professional mm -hmm. tone. They want it to be written from like, a professional point of view, which is great. Like professionalism is important in business, generally yeah. speaking. But then you talk to that person and they're like dropping like F-bomb and this, that, and the other thing. And their their personality doesn't really match that. So what I typically say is like, if you're going to write a piece of content, you know, obviously make it a little bit more professional and try to have it, you know, yeah. appear, appear to a broad audience. But generally speaking, like inject your personality into it. Don't make it super whimsical. But the idea is like write it from your own voice and tone. And then that becomes your brand too. Like, you know, branding isn't just like a logo and colors, right? It's like the the voice and tone on the website. It's the way that f people feel when they meet you and what they read online, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And and like you said, I mean, I think it's like be yourself as long as, you know, that's something you, <laughs> as long as it's inappropriate. Uh, yeah, I would but I think be yourself. Be yourself as long as yourself doesn't suck, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And um, as Oscar Wilde said, you know, it's a be yourself because everybody else is taken. Uh, so that's always <laughs> a good uh, good way. But I do think, and I, and I do think that's 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 part of it is I, I think um, this is where small businesses obviously have an advantage because you have the, you have the uh, opportunity to project the personality of the people really in the business or the owner of the business or whatever. Because even to this day, I mean, you could stick, I, did, uh, I don't know who even runs Forbes these days, but you could stick like the right. the main guy of Forbes on. I don't even think it's Forbes anymore, it's whoever. Right. And most people wouldn't really care because they'd be like, yeah, that person's so disconnected from my life. Totally. Yeah. And that's, I think that's where, you know, again, I think a lot of small businesses have a huge advantage there and they're very nimble as well. Right. Like with Forbes or mm -hmm. any, any large organization, think of like Best Buy Target, right. If they wanted to change their voice and tone or they wanted to like, you know, try a new strategy, right. Like they're putting video on blog posts, like mm -hmm. that's an investment. We got to talk to this, you know, we have to talk to our boss who talks to their boss who like talks to their boss, maybe six months from now, we get that stuff done. So like, I think, you know, the message that I'm trying to convey is like, let's, you know, I would say start this sooner rather than later and start experimenting, treat like your own sandbox. And, you know, again, I think it's going to benefit, I think it's going to hugely benefit a lot of small business owners out there. No, absolutely. So, um, so what do you, do you see anything else on the horizon now that people should be considering, um, you know, around SEO or just around how they present their businesses? Do you see any, any challenges or opportunities that are on the horizon? Yeah, you know, and I, I I'll veer a little bit away from SEO. I will yep. say this, that when I started, uh, when I started the Gorilla Agency, and of course, like SEO is what, is what we did, right? It's an SEO agency. We did a little SEM, uh, we did web design, but by and large, I mean, I drank the SEO Kool-Aid for so long. I love SEO. I think it works super well for small businesses. That said, like, I think the attention span of the consumer is, I mean, it's been decreasing, right? For the last ever, you know, and with the, you know, with the, I guess with the introduction or the, you know, to of like TikTok, for example, like those little short videos and now reels and shorts and like, the attention span is just down. So like you need to put out like a ton of content. So like my recommendation, and like I think where where we're going in, in general with marketing, and it's been this way for quite a while, but I think like first and foremost, like, you know, yes, do SEO because it's not going away anytime soon, mm -hmm. right? Like start running ads because, you know, again, like, I mean, they're, they're expensive, but this is the cheapest that they're ever going to be, right? So like do Google ads, but also build your own personal brand. So one of the things that I've been really focused on lately um, that I'll be honest with, you know, everyone, like I, I just started doing this like six months or a year ago, because again, I was really focused on selling the agency and then transitioning, you know, out of that business. But like, you know, build your own, per again, build your own personal brand. So like have, you know, you can be the face of your business. You can kind of build your personal brand. Because when you have that audience, like if you have 
a large social following and you have an awesome email list, right. Of like loyal fans, then, I mean, that's, that's your own, I mean, again, it's your own fan base. So like those people are going to buy from you. They get to know your personality. Like we talked about, inject that into the blog post, like be everywhere all the time, all at once. And I know it's a little challenging, but you can cross promote stuff across platforms, but that would be my recommendations. Like where are things going? Attention spans getting shorter, like diversify all of your marketing, really invest into like video strategies and other marketing strategies and, and try to build your own personal brand. Cause that's, that's where this, I think that's where things are really going and that's where the people are yeah. going to be the most successful. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. Absolutely. And I, and I think it's, uh, and, and it's becoming easier to do that, obviously. I mean, it's challenging, but there are the tools, there are people like yourself to help. So it's uh, in many ways, it's, it's a big challenge, but it's also easier to do this than it's ever been in many ways. For sure. And I think people, you know, the other thing is that people, I think they overthink things. I think they have mm -hmm. kind of analysis or paralysis through analysis. I always get those two yeah. flopped around. But I think that, you know, they think they have to have like this huge, you know, the awesome, you know, production team to shoot these videos. They have to have like, you know, an excellent writer that's writing blog content or, or whatever content that you're putting out in reality, like do it, you're going to suck at it. Sucking at something's like the first step to being good at something. So like take out your iPhone, shoot a video, put it online, learn, do and grow. And I think that's going to be um, huge for the audience here. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like anything else. It's practice. Yeah, I mean, I go back to some of my early podcasts. Uh, you know, I've learned a lot over the years. <laughs> <laughs> no, same here. You should do the first article that I wrote. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, listen, AJ, this has been great. All of AJ's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do remind people about you and your business. Yep. Yeah. So you can uh, you can find me at smallbusinessbonfire.com. So again, there's going to be, I mean, there's a ton of free articles on the website. There's a lot of my standard operating procedures that I've built up for the last decade in business. A lot of those are free resources on the website. I'm actually coming out with a local SEO course that should be done in the next couple of months. Um, and then just ultimately, I mean, my big thing is I have a, a newsletter that I put out, the Bonfire Field Guide, and that's where I, you know, have, you know, I spend four to five to six hours a week putting together a newsletter that's, again, my kind of tips and tricks and tactics for business. It really is broad for all businesses. <clears throat> the final thing that I will say is I only got on this podcast because of podcast bookers. Um, and I think it's really podcasting. I know we talked about it earlier, but it's, it's huge. Um, so I would recommend that you guys check out podcast bookers as well. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. I work with some fantastic, and to be honest, like 90% of my guests now come through podcast bookers, uh, and I would highly, highly recommend you. If, if you want to get into, if you want to be get into podcasting as a guest, um, go find, go find uh, one of the bookers. It'll be much easier for you to do it that way. <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah. So listen, thanks again, AJ. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Yeah.